Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to possibly one of the top three, I would argue, episodes of Red Pill the Miles. I am your host, Chingo Bling, uh, aka Mr. They Can't Deport Us All. Y'all know I was a, uh, a pawn of the leftist globalist agenda. You know, I didn't know. I was just like, man, this whole border issue, we've been talking about this shit, man. But uh, we're going to get into that later. Uh, we got my producer, Rob, in the building. What's up, buddy? Sorry, man. I came in I came in hot. Way? Yeah, for real. I came in hot. And, you know, I was part of my introduction. I was like, AKA, Mr. They Can't Deport Us All. You know, because, uh, man, we've been talking about border issues forever. Uh, and we have some tour dates coming up because it is a Biden miracle. The world is opening up suddenly. Um, thankfully, man, we are coming to Mission, Texas. It is sold out. We leave tomorrow. This is a March 26th. So thank you guys for selling it out. April 3rd, New Braunfels, Texas, almost sold out. We might have to add a show. New Braunfels, April 3rd. Brea, California, April 7th, I believe might get pushed back. Mm, imagine that. <sighs> we got some emails from the California folks, and uh, the American borders were opened before California was. I just want to let y'all... Let, let the sink, record show. Let it sink in that the borders were opened before California was. Um, then we have Killeen, Texas, April 9th, April 10th. Those tickets are doing very well. Thank you. Corpus Christi, May 20th through May 22nd. And then we have some more Cali dates. Ontario in July, Oxnard in July, Irvine, California in August. We don't know how that's going to pan out. But we do have Houston in September, San Antonio in October. All tickets, chingobling.com. Sass. All right. So yesterday... We yeah. did. It was National Tamal Day. Uh, my wife had a great idea. She's like, hey, you know, National Tamal Day is coming up. You thinking about getting out of retirement? You think you still got the risk for it? You think you can still spread that masa? Are you really the king of spices, the masa messiah? And I said, don't challenge me, woman. I ain't no mandilon, and I'm going to show you how we make these tamales. So uh, it was a group effort. We were on our feet a lot. We were juggling pots. Um, it was a lot going on. But yesterday... Uh, shout out to all the people, all the patrons, man. A lot of Red Pill folks. A lot of Red Pill folks. A lot of podcast listeners came out to 8th Wonder. Shout out to 8th Wonder. Uh, I was very proud of those tamales. Uh, tamales so good, you'll slap your mama. So, uh, yeah, coming out of retirement, it was a lot of work. Um, you know, it's a lot of work. Tamales are a lot of work. So if you ever want to get into the tamal game, just know you won't have much competition because don't nobody want to go through all them steps. Yeah, there's a reason they only do it seasonal, right? And mm -hmm. we had some last night. So we got a dozen of the pork. The chicken sold out. So mm -hmm. no, I didn't, I didn't try that. But then there was the uh, queso. What was it? Yeah, queso. For, uh, rajas con... Ra con uh, que chi yeah, chi yeah, yeah, yeah. The whatever. Because I never had those. Yeah, rajas con queso. Yeah. Rajas con queso. Mm -hmm. They were delicious. Oh, were they? Man. Damn, they were Something good, about that queso fresco, bro. Bro, like it, I mean, queso fresco, you know, it has flavor. Yeah. But when you have it like that, it just like pow, it's just so much flavor. I don't know what the hell. And the masa too. Like, I, I think you got it from Reynosa, right? You got it. Some yeah, authentic the, the, ass ingredients. Yeah, the, uh, what do they call it? Nistamal. So like the corn was ground from scratch. I can't give y'all all my fucking yeah, tricks. Don't give, them, don't give them everything. You know, like when you steam your tamales, you could put a coin at the bottom before you add your water to your steamer. That way, if your water runs too low, the coin going to make that noise. I can't give you all the game at once. <laughs> Maybe for the patrons. Maybe one day as an exclusive Patreon thing, next time we make tamales, we can give you a whole bunch of pointers. Oh, damn. How, how do you know your masa is the right texture? You know what I'm saying? You want that motherfucker like ice cream, baby. Did you have some uh, hiccups, though, since you've been you know, retired yeah. for a while? Yeah, you know, you adjust. Like, for example, my stove at the house is not a commercial big industrial kitchen stove so like one of my mechas and then the front one of the uh the gas things ever since the freeze i don't know who it was man i don't know if it was uh some leftists <laughs> came up in my house to sabotage my tamal career but the the front right one it's not as potent anymore so it's like fuck it just takes that just one. a weak flame yeah it's a weak ass flame now it, 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 it couldn't hang through the heat mm. so it just throws off your thing because the one on the left is going to just, you know, you got to like make adjustments. Just a weak lefty flame, huh? Yeah, lefty ass, lefty Larry flame. <laughs> that sounds like a rapper name. Le like Waka Flocka Flame. <laughs> <laughs> lefty Larry flame. He's going to, oh, dude, I saw this clip of this lady, leftist. She okay. was singing like a parody of a, a part of your world. Dun, 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 the aerial. 
Oh yeah. Uh, na, 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 okay. Na, 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 galore. Oh, wait, was that the stimmy thing? Yeah, she she's she's talking about everything. She's like, "Isn't it great to have competent leaders?" Oh my getting god. Getting us out of this mess, you know. It's like, we did it, Joe. And it's like, look at the People's Relief Act. So much good stuff in there. Da, 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 propaganda. And it's like, bitch, shut the fuck up. Did we not learn from the uh, the fucking, all the actors and actresses singing? What was it? Um, the people that say, I will not allow racist jokes to be told in my presence. Well, there, was, take- there was that. Okay. And then there was the, what, was it like Imagine? Was it? Oh, yeah. Look at all the yeah. people. Yeah. Fuck, man. It's because, you know. so cringe and disgusting. Well, you know, man, you know, people like, uh, you know, the actors be wanting attention, you know, so. You yeah. know, they talked about that a lot during last year, and you can't help but think that that's true, right? Like, all these people that have all this attention on, on a regular basis having no attention, like, mm-hmm. what can I do right now yeah. for some attention? Yeah, get you some grift. Get you some grift. grift get your grift on. Uh, what else from last night? I mean, patrons, like you said, sign, you know, that signed up. There have been some OG patrons were there. So mm-hmm. shout out to the locals. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're not signed up, sign up. This episode will be a, a day late, obviously, because we were yeah. out last night. We didn't get to record anything yesterday. So we're doing everything a day later. And that's the biggest thing about this Tamal Endeavor is that it, it's... You gotta, you gotta manage. You gotta go pick up. You need more coolers. You need more foil. You need more baggies. You need this. You need that. You need to supervise stuff and and make sure the meat is right and make sure this is right. So needless to say, it's one of those things where it's like, uh, yeah, good thing you don't do this all the time. Otherwise, you'd have to rearrange your life a little bit. Yeah. Because uh, you didn't get the podcast. You'd have to be <laughs> Chef Chingo for sure. Man, we was up to like one in the morning, like having to clean the whole kitchen. And, and then, do then, it over. And then the next day, you, you just add it. Do, okay, go get some more. Go buy another deep freezer and uh, more foil, more baggies. You know, if anybody, if Alexa was listening in, they would think I was running the Carter. For sure. Out of my house. They would think like you're the guy big, from, uh, what is it, Breaking Bad? Yeah. Mm-hmm. We whipping Just up, whipping all up the some of that. all the ingredients and shit. Some like, of that meth. Yeah. Something. Something. Mm-hmm. What's in the news today, Chingo? Man, there is a lot going on, brother. There's so much going on that obviously, I mean, the most pertinent things we'll get to today, but, uh, and then the Patreon exclusive, which is why we say sign up for the Patreon exclusive to get the rest of it before you go out of town to Mission. That's right. Where you're going to be on a mission. I don't know how much you want to say or what you want to say or who's getting what. Okay. So, initially through a contact it's like a contact of some contacts yeah we were planning to go down to mission Rio grand valley get a ride along talk to some sources get some interview type of coverage because you have half of america that is either downplaying the situation at the border they calling it a challenge they're saying uh it's biden needs to try to clean up what he inherited it's a mess he inherited they say stuff like well it's not really a crisis or like well what do you want them to do chingo just set them out they got to put them somewhere so they're contorting they're, they it's like contortionists one minute it was oh my god trump has a concentration camp these are kids in cages yeah then a couple months <clears throat> later it's like well chingo what do you i mean biden has to put them somewhere oh god so Needless to say, there's been like an unofficial gag order from uh, this administration. They don't want no media. They don't want the uh, Border Patrol to do any ride-alongs. They just, they just put a lid on the whole situation. So that was a big bummer and a big letdown. However, last minute in the clutch, we got some real high-profile sources down there now. Mm-hmm. I'm sounding like Tim Pool right now. Yeah, right. You know, I got sources. <laughs> so I know people try to clown me like, it's the way I want to be reporter. No, this is the Red Pill Tamales podcast. And if we're going to be down in the valley, an area that has, you know, showed us so much love and support. And if we could bring back some information and some value to help shed some light on a situation that maybe people don't really hear both sides of the argument. Like, is it a national security issue on top of a humanitarian crisis? You know what I mean? Or is it the other stance, which is, what I have for many years, which is just, fuck that, this is a country based on immigrants, and, you know, you can't, this and that, and, you know, fuck national security, it's about, yeah. you know, brown people, yeah, yeah. immigrate, we gotta let Thea in, you know, that was, that was me. <laughs> and a lot of people longest. in the comment section will just, will say like, yeah, you know, fuck Trump, and I only voted for Biden because he said he's, he was full of brown people. I mean, unfortunately, uh, he's, he set up a situation and a system to where arguably he's made things worse for these people. He's made it to where how many women and kids might be human trafficked or sex trafficked, molested, raped, whatever, end up in the wrong hands, in the custody of the wrong people. Uh, Jen Psaki even said it from the podium 
talking to the press. She's like, sometimes we'll find the kids with a little phone number in their pocket. And, you know, we make sure to call that number because that's the relative in the U.S. And it's like, uh, no, it's been proven by people that know about shit like that, is that the coyotes and the cartels, the human smugglers, what they'll do is they'll put the number in there because they already have a deal between the parents and uh, the cartel on the U.S. side, Mm -hmm. where it's like, they're going to call that number, they're going to reconnect them, they're going to be contacting them. Now this person, let's just say it's an adult, they might have to be an indentured servant. They might have to work for this, basically like a pimp, right? They got them working at a farm, a vineyard, construction, all the kind of businesses where you can do it under the table, like cash only, and this person is just going to be collecting your check and giving you a little peanut saying, bitch, you still owe me nine grand, from when I crossed your motherfucking ass. Mm-hmm. So shut the fuck up. <laughs> and they, you know, it's a bad situation. So we're going to go down there and we're going to do our best to, I don't want to say too much because yeah, that, people that, listening. I think you've seen, said plenty. Have that, you ever have you ever heard any anything to justify in the comments? And, I, and again, as they say, you should stay out of the comments as, as often as possible, mm-hmm. like just for your own mental health in general, like not just public figures, but people in general. Like if you post a lot of stuff and you get interactions... Just because you have an audience of a sort doesn't mean it can't, you know, take a shit on your brain if you consume it all the time, right? So, but the question is, um, have you witnessed any responses that are like, not justified, but they kind of make sense in the sense of if, if someone says, I went for Biden because he's for the, bl- the brown folk. Again, I have all the sympathy in the world, family from Mexico, love it, it's great. But when you just, like, you can't have open borders, right? Let's mm-hmm. just start with that conversation. You just can't have everybody coming in, surging the border, as, as clips of Biden showed, saying, when, when I'm president, you know, one encourages them to surge, to surge the borders. And that's exactly what happened. We need to surge. Yeah. And, um, you know, have you heard anything written anywhere from fans or from people, or maybe somebody you know that's, that justifies why we should let everybody in? Has anything ever made sense? Well, see, that's the thing, is that for the longest when I was campaigning, talking about border issues and just, you know, the whole They Can't Deport Us All movement. When I would have conversations or comments or or whatever that had to do with like, well, you know the other side of the argument, Chingo. It's, you know, we don't know what's coming through there. Like even when Trump was first running and he's like, they're, you know, they're rapists, people with lots of problems. When I didn't fully understand all exactly what the hell he was trying to say, I just heard how it felt. You know, bitch, I was feelings over facts (laughs) at the moment. And now you're like, facts don't care about your feelings. Exactly. Now I'm drinking leftist tears over here. (laughs) But um, so, yeah, for the longest, I was kind of like, yeah, I see what you're saying with, you know, you can't let everybody in, you know, but these people, they contributing too, and you know, you know, this is America. We should be able to, and, but it, but now I see it as like, how do you justify the national security aspect of it? You know what I'm saying? Like, what is the other argument? Because as we're seeing, they're overwhelming the border. The folks that are trying to keep control and keep track of, hey man, how many people from Yemen coming through here? How many people on a terrorist watch list coming through here how many different countries uh basically i heard a great argument about immigration and it basically said this the united states can either benefit from the folks that we have coming or be at a disadvantage based on what quality of folks we have coming so the system I've heard described is you have like almost like a spigot. I don't know what the word is, but like a valve. Like a spigot? Yeah, a valve to where it's like, if we need more immigration right now, economic speaking, what's that amount? Okay, open it up a little bit and just try to get the quality folks. Hmm. And then if it starts to look like, okay, based on the trend, based on our economy, based on this equation, we might want to start slowing down the spigot or the valve, hmm. or whatever it is, a little bit. But if we don't have a way to be like, okay, here's a family from Honduras, hardworking people. This is how they can contribute. They're not troublemakers. Um, let's put them over in this list or this pile. But then you have this person not really going to be contributing much, has a history and a past. They say he's a gang member and he's expressed some, you know, ISIS friendly sentiments or mm-hmm. something and it's like yeah you're going in this other pile yeah but when you have it to where everybody's pouring in and you're having to play a uh, bus driver babysitter 
and you're it, and they stop you know stop the wall so you got you can't even control the flow especially that we in a pandemic so it just looks odd that the white house is keep trying to keep people with masks keep a social distancing making everybody vaccinate which i'm not saying none of that is bad but you're on our ass talking shit about texas talking about we neanderthals hating on desantis in florida you know their spring break did look a little bit too lit but we're not gonna go there right now <laughs> because florida's doing so well that they're everybody wants to go down there yeah they might inherit some problems themselves for sure but um you know it's like how do you not how do you not pay attention to look at the overflow look at how these folks can't even control the flow to be like okay we're trying to make two piles so we can let in some good people and not let in the bad but you're distracting folks with all these kids unaccompanied and there's already like a whole little game that that the smugglers play where it's like you have the coyotes but then you have these other fools called like falcons or some shit and they're more like lookout mm. where they guide the kid as far as they can and then they say all right look you're gonna go up to that that wall that uh fence talk to those people in that uniform um tell them you're alone you know tell them this tell them that what have you there's a number in your shirt and go and this is what you say right mm -hmm. and then the parents back home they already paid what they could pay the fa the falcon's gonna get his cut the coyote is getting his cut we're enriching the cartels and it's a big fucking mess dude that's that's such a scary thought, you know, and we hear it all the time. Like, there's no way, like, my parents or something like that would just give their kid away or have them go on this journey on their own with the possibility of making it to the United States. Like, because it's not guaranteed and so many other things can go wrong. A lot wrong. of danger. A lot of danger, man. And it's it's just crazy that you, we, can't, we can't have a civil conversation because emotions get involved so quickly that you can't have actual discourse. Like, there's no conversation. It's just one yelling at the other because you know sympathy, you're a monster. Like, what are you talking about? And the other side's like, well, hold up, man. Let's look at some crime numbers. Let's look at some how many people are coming in. Let's look at the quality of people, like you said. And it just can't be had for some reason. Well, first of all, people can't even agree if it's a crisis or not. Some people are like, no, it's just a challenge. It's not a crisis. Then... As we're playing the blame game, some folks are too busy just trying to put it off on Trump. You know what I mean? And some folks won't even recognize the differences in policy and how maybe if you incentivize people, you know what I mean? Like, for example, they say that down in Honduras, you'll have, arguably, they're almost like, let me not get ahead of myself. Basically, there's people down there in these communities, they know people are hurting, they want some hope. They want some opportunity. They want some safety or, or a better life or what have you. And they go around and they're just like with the megaphone on the truck. Hoy van a salir las caravanas or cada miércoles. Like we're, we're gathering people. There's going to be work. There's going to be opportunity. So they're just lying to people mm. trying to get them along this journey and this voyage. And kind of setting them up for failure because they don't show them the end result. Like, look, bro, look. Biden is going to put you in a cage. You're going to be very uncomfortable. You're not going to be able to bathe. You're going to be overflowed. Um, if you're smaller and weaker, you might be the one getting molested because you don't know how many different age group people they're mixing you in with. There might be a pod that's designed for 200 or 300 people. And they um, here informed with Anthony. With all these people, too, I'm surprised we haven't heard of one person getting COVID and getting, like, deathly ill or ill to the, the point where it needed to be reported. You know what I mean? Isn't mm -hmm. that a little odd that these people do have, like, some of these people have, have had COVID, obviously. And either they release them into Texas, which, I guess, do what you do, and others that you know have to be in there. Like, you can't have that many hundreds of people and nobody has COVID and nobody's very ill. Like, everybody's just cool. Like, that's a little strange. Yeah, man, it's a big fucking mess. Uh, Informed with Anthony on Instagram posted breaking news. Senate Republicans will be visiting migrant migrant facilities near the border this Friday. That's when we're going to be down there. Stating this is now a humanitarian crisis. COVID-19 outbreaks, border towns declaring state of emergency and facilities holding thousands in facilities built for two to three hundred people. Uh, furthermore, here's an example. In Gila Bend, Arizona, Mayor Chris Riggs has declared a state of emergency due to the border crisis and stated that Border Patrol is dropping migrants off in his small town that has received zero federal help from the Biden admin and has no way to care for these migrants. So you're in Honduras. People 
funnel you into this dream and this idea of, look, man, you go strength in numbers. Everybody's going. Some of y'all got family over there. Uh, Biden's cool. He's nice. He's going to hook you up. And now's a window of opportunity to get up out of here. They go on this dangerous journey. Fast forward. They get dumped off in some small town in Arizona. Fuck around, caught COVID or some shit. Can't work. What are you going to be doing? Begging? Like, how the fuck? Yeah. Because that shit, we saw that shit in Mexico. We were in Monterrey. And it was a lot of Honduran people that just kind of got lost in the sauce from the caravans. And now they're just transient people. Now they're just out there begging in Mexico. Because Mexico's not going to let them work. Mexico's not going to just be like, oh, you're a Mexican citizen now. Welcome. They're just like, "Uh, y'all were supposed to be passing through here to get to... Like in the few days we were in Monterrey, I picked up on the tensions between Mexicans and the caravan folk. Uh-huh. Where they, I would hear people say stuff like, uh, "They realized that their Amer- their dream isn't the American dream. Their their new dream is stay in Mexico and take advantage of their resources and the people's hearts. That they're gonna just care for you. They're gonna you can beg. They're gonna give you money." And why go to America if you could just stay here in the halfway point and get hooked up? So that's how some of the Mexicans started feeling, especially after the lady went viral, where she, uh, she was like, we're tired of eating these beans. These people keep giving us these damn beans and tortillas, and we don't like that shit. So Mexicans were like, bitch, we're over here trying to like help y'all out and be good people, and y'all are fucking dissing our beans. Like, bitch, we eat beans. Damn. How disrespectful. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we listened to that interview last week or a week or so ago with um, the president of uh, El Salvador, mm-hmm. with Tucker. And, you know, he made that point that just two or three years ago, when he looked at the rates of people going coming in caravans from El Salvador versus Honduras, it was the other way around. And it's because, you know, it's a reflection of where they're coming from. We never talk about the countries that they're coming from. We never talk about, like, actually look in depth of why these people are trying to leave. Like, instead of... Well, for starters, everybody here is shitting on the United States for being a terrible, racist, you know, shit country for some reason. Meanwhile, everybody and their mother is literally trying to come here, and nobody's criticizing the countries they're actually coming from. Some of them may have been called shithole countries. I don't know. I don't know if they are or they aren't, but they're people, they're, people are leaving for a reason. Mm-hmm. I think if we focused on that a little bit, people might see, okay, let's maybe criticize these countries and get things in order there, like the president of El Salvador said, that way their people doesn't, don't leave. Yeah, but here's how a Democrat's going to hear what you just said. You're right, Rob. We should go down there and give them more money. <laughs> How much more money you want to give them? Yeah, How much but, more money you want to stuff into these bills? But based on everything you just said. Yeah, you're right. Because here's the thing, though, Rob, is like as I'm, as I'm peeping game and I'm, I'm learning, I'm evolving every day. And I want to be careful of not picking a team, picking a side, and being partisan and being biased. Because studies have already shown you can get brain damage from consuming too much partisan media. So if you watch nothing but CNN or you watch nothing but Fox News, your brain ain't going to work no more. You're getting brain damage. So that would explain why 40% of Democrats, who are not dumb people, 40% of Democrats believe that, um, I think it was a Rasmussen poll, they believe that border security is not, not a big deal. It's not an important issue, and it's not a national security issue. And that's what we've been talking about, the whole intro to show. So here's the thing about uh, what you were mentioning about checking out these countries, right? Mm. Uh, Informed with Anthony. Uh, We're going to have him on the podcast. Yeah. So he posted on Instagram, in a meeting with border officials, Joe Biden has appointed VP Kamala Harris to lead the ongoing border crisis. Biden said VP Harris will be working with foreign countries to tackle the root of migrants fleeing. Biden also stated the border crisis is President Trump's fault. <laughs> God damn it. But people don't, folks don't understand how good of a job the Trump administration had control of the border situation. Sure, we had caravans. Sure, some people had to get put in them damn cages, which he didn't build. However, working with Mexico, like threatening uh, Mexico with tariffs, where they said, hey, y'all are building all them Ford cars. Well, we about to sanction some shit. And when they come back through here, and he was about to basically start creating friction or punishing. Mm -hmm. Because one thing about economics-based people is that you consider human motivation and you think about incentives 
and friction. So one of the arguments is Biden's policies incentivized migrants from all over the world to say, this is your chance on day one. I'm going to give amnesty, uh, blah, 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 uh, you know, health care, this and that. Y'all deserve it. Come get some. OK, you're incentivizing people. For sure. Then you stop the building of the wall. Boom. You've really you've uh, done away with some of the friction that was going to help not encourage people. So how the fuck? How the fuck does Biden just put it all on Trump when it's like if you're if you're paying attention, Trump had a good control of it to where he's trying to stop the fentanyl from coming in, killing 60,000 plus Americans every year with the opioid crisis. Um, you know, everything from uh, stay in place where it's like, hey, while we're trying to figure out what's going to happen with your case, you got to stay in Mexico, Mexico City and await your court date. Right. right? Biden is like, nah, you're going to get a bus ticket. To Chicago or anywhere <laughs> or somewhere up north, middle America. And we're hoping you'll you, come back for your court case. Yeah. Well, if you understand human motivation, you have not given them any incentive to return for their court date. You've only incentivized them to stay in whatever town you gave them a bus hound, uh, greyhound ticket. Bus to, hound. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, a little gray bus Pizza hound. Pizza greyhound. That's true, man. It's, you know, and, and we're talking about some serious points, and uh, I'd love to interject some comedy here by saying how, how, I don't even know what the fucking word to use, funny is it that you have all these uh, states on the East Coast, let's just take New York, for instance, mm-hmm. or New Jersey, like mm-hmm. criticizing, you know, Texas and, and what's going on mm-hmm. at the border when they're not attached to the border. They have almost no, I mean, I know they're part of the country, obviously, part of the United States, but they have no idea what these southern border states or, or cities are going yeah, through. Yeah, border much, towns. Yeah, much less the, the state itself. It's just, it's a, it's a weird thing. What I think a lot of people could, could use, I mean, me included, is to have all these things delivered to you. Like, I'm not saying that we're slow. None of us are slow. But if you're really hell-bent on just choosing the left, for instance, and saying that this is all, you know, a terrible thing that's going on without, like, digesting the information and actually, like, doing some research and actually grasping what's going on versus having shit thrown down your throat like uh dan crenshaw had posted an interview that he was on some dude's show that i'd never heard of his name was like medi medi something some middle eastern guy that's on msm he's like on the peacock app or some shit mm. and uh on nbc and he was just literally yelling over dan crenshaw as he's interviewing him like he's not that wasn't an interview it was literally an activist yelling at a congressman and he was like he pulled up some stats and literally i'll send it to you it's in, even in the caption, Crenshaw's like, this is one of the most frustrating interviews you'll ever hear, have to hear me be on, but it's worth uh, noting that we are discussing the issues, right? Because they were talking about some things. But he was yelling over Crenshaw, and as he was saying stats, he's like, I just got off with the border patrol. Like, that, you're wrong. Like, that's not true. Like, listen to what I'm saying. And like, I would just yell over him. And the people that already subscribe to that side will listen to him, take it all in really fast, because it's like, it's 10 minutes. Oh, Mr. Crenshaw, we're out of time. I'll see you next time, or whatever. It's like, what? You know, like... T- tune in to RPT or something else. Maybe uh, Ben Shapiro is also a bad example because he talks so fast and so many different you know stats. But take it in and, and listen to what we're trying to say. It's not like we're trying to jam this agenda down your throat and say you're wrong. It's just there's more to it is what I'm trying yeah. to get at. I, I think a lot of Mexican-Americans that voted, uh, maybe consider themselves Democrats or voted for Biden, I think from what it seems... Based on the crickets, yeah, and the lack of a lot of crickets. Oh, by the way, mm-hmm. I don't hold that thought, please. Go ahead, go ahead. I had, I've had three people today send me screenshots from George Lopez's comment section. Apparently, he's getting lit today for all the crickets. Uh, but keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of buyer's remorse. Yeah, I mean, it, Mr. Lopez, um, you're not gonna lose any points with anybody like if if you just acknowledge that it's a situation like nobody's gonna judge you um do what you want do what you want yeah but i just feel that even longoria any of these folks aos i think aoc is the only one that's been semi-consistent she didn't fly down there and do a photo shoot and cry and say it's a concentration camp but she did say regardless of party regardless of candidate like we don't it's it's not right or some shit yeah at least she was consistent and i feel that we've been consistent as well because we weren't saying like fuck yeah it's dope that trump has kids in cages it was just like man i wish there was a better way (laughs) it's like he's got to put him somewhere (laughs) nah um uh but we just go hard right like ah you know they're little spacesuits but they they seem kind of comfortable yeah no i mean there's optics 
And that's what's really hurting the Biden. He's off to a bad start, the Biden campaign, the administration, because you was talking all that shit. Like, have you seen the compilation clip of Kamala and, and Nancy? Like, this is not who we are. These are babies in cages. Yeah. And then uh, you're listening to it, but on the other, like on the left, it's like the kids in the foil, and they're like crowded in this thing, and it's like, okay, y- y'all built the cages, y'all been doing this. And y'all talked so much shit about Trump, and now y'all are having to bring back some of Trump's policies. You're having to bring back the stay in place thing. You know, you having to open up more facilities, and, and Jen Psaki don't know how to circle back. And they've painted themselves in this corner where, like, y'all are such hypocrites. Y'all talked so much shit, and y'all are realizing that Trump's way was the only way and the best way, which is let's try to keep control. So we can understand who and what. Let, let's see, I'm even doing the Trump hand. <laughs> who and what are coming through the wall? DeSantis, I'm going to call him G. Santis. I saw yeah. some of that, somebody yeah. comment that. G. Santis. G. Santis is, uh, is kind of doing that in a sense. He shut that. Did you see the clip of him shutting that reporter down? He He's like, like bah, it's bah, bah, ir- bah. It, wrong. Mm. It's irrefutable. I gave you irrefutable. Question. Yeah, wrong. Next. Like, yeah, he, he straight out the Trump Dude, book. for real. He, he said, Trump, let me see that blueprint. Dude. That's how you do that. But way better. If we're being honest, because G. Santis here is hitting you with the wrong, and I'm gonna tell you why, and it's very concise and it's clear. And he says it's ir- I just gave you the irrefutable. How this and shit then is boom, irrefutable. yeah, and then more like more facts, right? Trump yeah. would have been like, "You wrong- shut your bitch ass." Yeah, up. pretty much, right? Yeah, and then ask China, <laughs> then sir, next. why did you say ask China to me? Why, sir? Because you need to ask China. Is it because I'm AAPI? You need to ask China. Is Next. it because I'm a- Asian American Pacific Islander? We'll get into that too. <laughs> that 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 whole thing was really bizarre. The the parlors. I mean, I didn't know that some of those places were known for allegedly uh, sex trafficking oh, yeah. and all I that. Had no idea, dude. Man, the shit that they leave <laughs> the sarcasm, out. Sarcasm, bro. The shit that they leave out. What, who leaves what out? The news, like the. Uh, oh, you they, know, they're not saying. Well, what do you mean? What did they the, leave out? The, well, the, that these places were known for. They just made it sound like it's just a massage yeah, parlor. Yeah, like it's a fucking massage heights or you know a massage envy kind of place, like a chain. Yeah. Enough, fam. It's like no, they going they gonna do some. They're gonna do some strange freaky deaky stuff too. Literally for some change. Just yeah. change, maybe. Mm-hmm. Not a whole lot. Yeah. Didn't have to go on a spree. They probably would have done it for free if you asked nicely. You gotta be a really good negotiator, <laughs> Rob. Try to get you some of that for free. Hey man. <laughs> Trust me, you can do but, it. But that's a <laughs> damn, he's not real confident. Make, you With a beard it. like this, bruh. You think I put you think I'll be having to pay? I saw somebody come trying to have some competition at the at the Mala Day yesterday. Yeah, yesterday, National Tamal Day, eighth wonder. Uh, Rob was the alpha beard male. He had the, he had the most lit beard, and yeah. then this other fool. It was like his arch nemesis. Like it kind of looked like him. It was like Bizarro Rob. Yeah, it was. And his beard was like probably an inch shorter than Rob's. And it was Rob, a lot Rob, more light complected too. And then Rob just turned and and he just it, it was like two Rams were about to. Whoosh. Yeah, but he had that. Uh, what do we call that? Like, is it Latino privilege? What what do they call you? White Tino. White Tino yeah. privilege. Yeah, and then some people uh, uh, allegedly say Homeboy had the, it was beard extensions, it was plugs. Mm. Uh, he was putting beard supplements. I can see it. It kind of so, looked yeah. like it curved in an awkward way. Yeah. So so yeah, Rob Rob kept the crown on that one. <sighs> what were you um, talking about? Oh, we were talking about, oh yeah. So so you brought up an interesting point. You were basically saying that it's funny how the news doesn't really pinpoint like and these places are known for sex and a lot of them are getting pimped right and they're human uh human traffic people basically like that they're basically like brothels they didn't mention it yet. no nothing to that that's very interesting i i guess part of their argument is number one they want to play up how the white man is evil and how there's actual thing called white supremacy and asian hate and these are innocent little massage spots where they just you know Dude, okay, so right away... You keep your clothes on and shit. You got your boy, Raheem... Uh, Joseph Raheem. Joseph Raheem. <laughs> Joseph Raheem Breezy. Saying that, you know, after the, the, the incident happened, we're hopping on a plane right now, we're going to talk to the Atlanta, you know, Asian community. Community. And he was quick to go to Atlanta, huh? Super quick. Everybody on the border is like, bitch! Def- are you going to visit the, the border? Uh, not today. <laughs> <laughs> Does Calm anything me. make you want to put a pencil in your ear more than that woman's laugh? Or yeah, cackle, her, whatever yeah, the fuck it is. That's a cackle. That's not a laugh. Yeah, that's a cackle. It's. I wish I loved anything as much as she loves to just cackle at nonsense. She cackles at humanitarian crises. Mm. But, you know, I've been and I'm sure I'll go again. 
it's like so many things, like you, you said, they're off to a bad start. They're off to such a bad start. I'm doing this thing too yeah. now. Like Trump, the worst, they're off to, the worst start. They're ever. off to such a bad start that I don't know how we get through 2021 with like in just an inkling of a this administration has the potential to do some good shit, bro. Like they're already at the bottom of the barrel. Like th- right now, okay, this might be the worst president in history. Yes, uh, arguably, <laughs> arguably, they're off to. The worst start ever <laughs> in American history. Bro, they're even saying, okay, now this is what we're talking about. I'm not a doctor and I don't want to medically assess Joe Biden's mental uh, cognitive decline. But you should. But it's it because it is a medical issue. Da cosita, da lastima. Like, yeah, for you're sure. You're almost like, pobrecito, because... That's your abuelito. Yeah, like, you know, my dad's birthday was today. He's getting up there in age. Oh, for real? Yeah. He, he's, for sure, I'll let him know. Uh, he, he's, getting <laughs> up, he's getting up there in age. God willing, I'll be at Joe Biden's age one day. I don't want to have dementia. I don't want to have cognitive de- decline. Um, I also don't want to be leader of the free world. But... I forget who, there was an article or something, but some people are speculating. This is speculation, right? This is baseless, if you will. Chingo is spreading disinformation. YouTube. Speculation. Basically, basically they're saying the role that his wife, Jill Biden, plays, Mm -hmm. Dr. Dr. B. Dr. B. And the role that Kamala sometimes has to play is like they're always there, like near him, like los tan cuidando, like nurses, like they'll be like, you know, Joe, you good? You know? And if somebody needs to tell him something, like he trusts them, kind of like, Okay, he needs to come over here. Hey, Joe, we need you over here. Almost like a little helper and shit. Yeah, all they need is a little cut for when he starts drilling just uncontrollably. Da cabron. Da lastima, you know? And um, can we talk about the fall? It's a good segue into the slip. It really one. is. So Joseph Raheem Breezy slipped up the stairs. <laughs> and the I, we're not trying to make fun of him or laugh and shit. I am. <laughs> but the the irony of the whole situation is that when... You know, my president, DT, mm-hmm. Teflon Donnie. Teflon Donnie. Was rocking them uh, motherfucking, I don't know if they was Balenciagas, Lubaton, Lou how you say that shit? Louis, but something. The little red bottoms, allegedly. Yeah, red bottoms on. No, nah, I'm throwing that. <laughs> Crema los tacos. I'm trying to make for the story sure. better. Anyway, Trump had leather bottom shoes. Now, for somebody that wore boots for many years, when you get a brand new pair, them hoes be slippery. Mm-hmm. So, Trump was going up in the Air Force One, not Air Force Two. And he like did a little foo foo, you know, but he played it off. Foo foo, little slip, got back up, you know, like a G. And the news probably made it like a week's worth yeah. of fodder where they were like, and some experts weigh in that the president may be showing signs of mental decline. And <laughs> is he fit to be president? We're here, CNN. Uh, Trump's fall. Um, did you, we have an expert here. Did you, well, since you slipped with his left foot, that, let, that lets you know the right side of his brain might be fucked <laughs> off. And all this stuff, all this speculation. Fucked up. Joseph Raheem Breezy, he slips up the stairs about three times. Vroom, vroom, he reaches snapped for the thing. some shit up. I mean, he's reaching for the thing. He's slipping up. And, and we got to remember how much shit Biden was talking when, when Trump had his little baby slip. He was like, look, look at the way he steps. Look how I step. Look how he step. Look how I step. Come on, man. He slides down ramps. I run upstairs. Yeah, talking. Cut to... <laughs> the memes man the, the they just won yeah, they won the internet for a few days yeah the one when he uh trump's throwing a baseball trump's hitting Hit the, the golf ball golf ball uh and then there was the korea putin ones were like you know the, the memes and the gifts and then they had like the donkey kong fucking barrels rolling down so many all dude. kinds of different shit and what well, you just mentioned uh korea and all these folks putin bro putin 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 Pew, 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 Putin. Putin's gonna pew, pew, Biden. Putin punked the shit out of the president. He was like, look here, fam. How many countries have done that so far? All of them. We're about to go through them. So Biden had a very bad week. First, Putin hit him with the, uh, because Biden said that Putin is a soulless killer. Right. And then Putin was like, I hope you maintain in good health. (laughs) And I mean that sincerely. And then he says, better yet, I have better idea. How about me and you speak in public and have debate? <laughs> because he knows that we don't have a leader that can speak in public. Let that sink in. Everybody in the world knows that our guy can't speak in public, unscripted, unedited, and so on against this other world leader. 
And then Kim Jong Kim Jong Un's sister was like, "America, if you want to sleep good at night, don't play your little games." Like threat sent a little threat. Like, I might get canceled for that terrible accent. Well, you know that's how she said it. That's exactly how she said it. <laughs> I'm just that's how I heard it. And then um, what other countries, man? Uh, I think Iran was popping shit. Putin, uh, North Korea, like oh China, China, yeah. They had an event in Alaska. Uh, was Biden there? No, I don't think so. I think he sent his. I forget who it was an ambassador. I think something. it was Sawwell. I'm just kidding. Oh no no no, he, he'd have been <laughs> over there like hey Fang Fang. <laughs> so so I forget the dude's name, but it's somebody in Biden's cabinet whose job it is to deal with I guess China. So they had a Chinese leader there. It was like this big uh, like a big meeting room and stuff, and. The American dude took some chick that had like blue hair with on her head and shit, hmm. and Amer the American people couldn't call out China on all the humanitarian like crazy stuff that they're doing, including the genocide, the Uyghurs, the camps, um, harvesting organs, like doing a political dissidence, taking their organs out their body. You can just order a kidney they'll give it to you 60 racks what do you need a heart a lung we got you fresh on ice fresh. they got igloos and shit yeah they say they put you on a dialysis machine take out what they need to take and then shut that bitch off because they done took what they needed so our american folk couldn't even mention none of that meanwhile i think the only thing they did mention was like um we're a little concerned with how you're dealing with hong kong and you know the taiwanese people they were like america First of all, <laughs> you need to worry about y'all's racism and George Floyd and BLM. And it seems like y'all have enough problems on your own. So you are not coming to this meeting from a position of strength. Basically, we got punked. We lost the, what is it? The moral high ground to a country that takes organs out of political dissidents' bodies. and has camps for the Uyghurs and slave labor and a whole bunch of shit. We lost the moral high ground to them. They basically told us to our face, hey, bitch, don't talk about what the fuck we got going on. Go fix your shit. And then these fools left. Okay. And meanwhile, that's <laughs> happening. Meanwhile, all that's happening here in the States. We have tyrants that want to take your guns away. Again. Everything. Man, did you see that thing Sam Tripoli posted? Where it was like, um, I guess, I don't know if they were legit papers in different states i can pull it up hmm. but it, it was just like the same headline for different states oh yeah yeah, with yeah. like um mass shootings surges in, in massachusetts surges, surges in, Ma in yeah. yeah uh fuck what in colorado so, dude if you're gonna like if you're gonna run with that let's be a little bit more creative let's use some different pictures maybe a different headline but it was literally verbatim and only one of them had a different picture i think yeah it says when you realize they don't even give a shit how blatant the propaganda is at this point so he shows two screenshots it says mass shootings surge he show did, your camera he show did, your camera if you didn't see this guy it says uh mass shootings surge all the same pictures and then it says uh uh fuck hold on i have a time limit on instagram <laughs> okay so you see the little google thing it says mass shooting surge and then you click news right mm -hmm. so the images and videos and then it says um all the Tallahassee, the Tallahassee Democrat, the Marion Star, the Tennessean, the Chronicle Express, the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, the Greenville News, that all these papers say mass shooting surge in Pennsylvania as nation faces record high. And then and so on. Mass shooting surge in Tennessee as nation faces record high. Mass shooting surge in South Carolina as nation faces record high. Over and over and over again. Just putting it out there, uh, letting them know they coming for your guns, and that's a very interesting debate. There, you know, it's, and, and now we'll kind of segue into what's been going on, which we kind of touched at the beginning, but haven't uh, mm -hmm. haven't talked about yet. And this was going on in Boulder, right? And I actually took a screenshot of. So let's set the let's set the, set the landscape for everybody, right? We have mm -hmm. this terrible crisis or this massacre that happened in Colorado. Oh, I thought you was gonna say the south side of Chicago. <laughs> well, because they be doing that every weekend, dude. Over 500 mass shootings in the last, did you see that stat? No. In the last uh, a few weeks, over 500 mm -hmm. shootings, unreported. We're not talking about that at all. Yeah. I, yeah. And I think it's been seven mass shootings in the past seven days. There's also. been, uh, let's just say, I, I'll find it, but it was, let's say from the beginning of the, of the year, over 500 shootings just within that one 
U.S. city. Oh, Chicago, yeah. More than in the history of mass shootings in the history of the country. I've hung out in the, on the south side of Chicago um, many times, and I, I'm a little... Uh, I'm a little mad at myself because I should have been a little bit more paranoid. Yeah, because <laughs> we did an in-store uh, in-store appearance at uh, damn, I forget my homeboy's store. Exclusive, I think it's called Exclusive. And anyway, long story short, going. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm trying to find the. Da, 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 da. This is so when when this all happened immediately, and this is kind of goes back to what I was talking about when the thing happened in Colorado in Boulder. By you know, Raheem's, you know, hopping on the flight, talking to the Atlanta, you know, Asian community. And then this happens in Boulder, and we find out that everybody that died was white, right? Mm-hmm. I think all 10 plus the cop. The cop might have been black. Mm. But I, all the people, all the all the citizens that were in the grocery store were, were white. Not a peep about it, right? Mm. But before we found out who the shooter was, everybody's running with the white guy, the white guy, the white terrorist. You know? So l- let me ask you this. When you say everybody, do you mean like blue check marks on Twitter? Blue check marks on Twitter and the news. What what news publications jumped the gun and said it's a white guy? Well, let's, let, why don't you just read what CNN's uh, bottom headline said there? All right, developing story. It says investigation shooter was factually Arab but morally white. What does that even mean? It basically means that no matter what, even if it's a black person that does a crime against an Asian, they'll find a way to twist it back to white supremacy. And whiteness equals bad. They're going. I don't understand. I really, I really don't understand how we've arrived at the point where we. This is the culture. The culture for a lot of people is just shit on the white man. And I'm not Mister. I'm a defender white man because I don't know. Somebody's gonna twist that up and be like, man, Ching only cares about white people, homie. He forgot about the rasa. It's like no, we're living in a world where they're playing games with our brains. They're abusing us with the media. Every th- up is down, down is up. Um, they're not giving you the real. Just say the truth. He was a, a dude that had, um, what is it, ISIS ties? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, some kind of tie. He was Syrian, and supposedly he was a Trump hater, and he was mad about Trump's immigration policies, and he's from Syria, and he's down with ISIS. Somehow, some way, CNN and the left will do some type of mental gymnastics and paint it to you. They'll frame it. They'll assign you the opinion that somehow, some way, yes, he was Arab. Yes, he was from Syria. Yes, he hated Trump. Uh, yes, he was down with ISIS. But inside his brain, he felt white. Check some of this data, okay? I'm not going to switch cameras because I'm, I'm reading it off. I didn't put it on the notes because it would have made too mm-hmm. many sheets. Mm-hmm. Uh, so data claiming, data claims that 60% of mass shooters are white, are white, categorizes Middle Eastern and North africans as white but excludes gang crimes so they're they're lumping in all these different people somehow kind of like not too long ago you you were hearing a lot of things like uh i think latinos and and some other like sub category of people were all being lumped in as white for certain studies like it's like who the who is everybody are we all just white you know what i'm saying we're just gonna blame everything that happens on white if it's even though it's not an actual like white english european type of irish person even if they're not they're still like you could be black brown you know in the middle and you're still categorized as white is is they trying to lie with the statistics though for sure they'll do stuff like that to make the numbers fit the narrative they want and since like, 1982 mm-hmm. there have been 122 mass shootings excluding gang violence yeah so for example some of the stuff that goes down on the south side of chicago based on the amount of people they get shot yeah constitutes a mass shooting so by definition if you go shoot up a party and you hit just a whole bunch of random people outside the club technically it's a mass shooting however they don't include that because it's gonna fuck up their narrative of it's the white man it's these crazy militias that's why you need to hand over your gun give me your ar matter of fact just give me your guns because the white man is the boogeyman and they out to get you. All right, three more, right, real quick. Three mm-hmm. little, uh, little uh, quick ones here. Uh, so gang, or gang violence makes up seventy-five to eighty-five percent of homicides in the inner cities of Chicago, inner cities like Chicago, rather. Since the beginning of two thousand twenty-one, there have already been five hundred twenty-seven shootings in Chicago. We're barely in March. The, that means that four hundred twenty of those shootings were due to gangs. Nearly four times as many mass shootings since nineteen eighty-two. And I'm sure all the, a lot of those guns are black market. They're not registered. Um, in other words, 
if you try to do gun control, that's not going to do anything. Criminals with, are going to criminal. That's not going to fix that. You 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 going to hurt people like me and Rob that want to defend themselves exactly. And that's what like HR one twenty seven, whatever that bill is that they presented. Like the people, they already do background checks. They already do some of these things that they they're just talking on the news about. Like this bill will bring, but they're talking about doing really like extensive background checks, like all of your immediate family, even uh, spouses and ex spouses. Uh, it, it's just, it, it's really crazy. I mean, they want to charge you an, uh, an insurance, like an annual insurance fee. Of course, the government wants to charge you some more money just to have the gun. They want to make you get an extra license on top of the gun license. If you don't have a license, if just for not having a license, but having an unregistered weapon, let's just say you, oh, whatever, it was a gift or some shit, make up a scenario. They could fine you up to- One in a poker game. Exactly. You could be fined up to 150 grand and a lengthy jail sentence. I thought this was America, man. So- Everybody calling me a sellout, vendido, malinche, malinchista, coconut, race trader, Uncle Tom. If you really pay attention to what the fuck we talk about, a lot of it has to do with freedoms that affect you and your life, like freedom of speech, uh, Second Amendment, and so on. That's the shit we talk about. You know what I'm saying? So stop trying to make it like... Oh, this fool wants to be white. He forgot about the raza. I remember back when you were real. Where's Cleto? Where's the tamales? Bitch, the tamales sold out yesterday, ho, and you didn't come. They were gooder than a bitch, And too. they they so good, you slap your mama. That's how fucking good they were. <laughs> I was damn proud of them tamales. As much work as it was, uh, you never stop learning about the masa. You never, even when you think you're the king of spices, man. I actually gave some to my mom this morning. What'd she say? I'm waiting for to hear okay. feedback tonight. I can't okay. wait. Uh, that boy T, um, I went and delivered him some after we were done. And he was like, man, them motherfuckers are fire. Oh, yeah. Um, somebody I, was like, man, no más te faltó la salsa. I'm like, motherfucker, we had red and yo, green. Yo, do you have more? Yeah. Oh, I got to take some. It yeah. was so damn good, dude. Like, mm-hmm. I'm my, not that, even... That's Marisol. Marisol. She made both of them? Yeah. The green and the red? Uh-huh. Listen, I, I got to switch back to the camera here. Where the fuck is it? Goddamn... Uh, I'm not even saying this because we're here or because it's... it's oh, because we're, we're friends. Together, or because we're friends. Yeah. No. It was... I literally told Don, you could you could ask Don. I, I tasted it and I said, I can taste my times in Mexico. I taste... It's like your heritage, bro. Like you just tasted the love. Bro, I could taste that and then I could smell that soap that we always used to use. You know what I'm talking about? You, memory. You, you, I everything. swear to you, dude. Grandma's house. 100%. The, the outhouse. Yes. <laughs> el, el boiler con las, you know, with the fresh wood you had to put in there. I swear it was that goddamn good. The squatty potty. Uh, nah, they don't know about that. <laughs> we, I don't know why we were talking about my tushy for like 15 minutes yesterday. Yeah, it was like 20 people in a huddle. And I was like, look, y'all, uh, bidets are the shit. And fuck you if you change my mind. <laughs> I can't share without a bidet. Yeah. I used to be about the wet wipes. Can't even do that. It was yeah. a weird combo. Yeah. Weird segue, but um, mm-hmm. back to the tamales. On point, man. Thank you, sir. Um, Appreciate it. What else? What else are we wrapping up in the news? Because there's so much going on. We only got to really two things because, I mean, for us, especially here in Houston, Texas, and in general, the border, the border situation is something that we will be talking about for a while because it's going to continue to develop every well, day. Well, I'll be damned if you start seeing a whole bunch of MS-13 illegal fucked up crimes happening in our state like i mean i know california has already had their fair share because that's where ms-13 started but man i mean i don't think you know the street culture is different i don't know if people are gonna let that shit fly but um that's the last thing you want man the last thing you want is for your neighborhood your community your city your town your state go to shit you don't want to have to be like, nah, man, don't go down that street, or nah, man, don't hang yeah. out at that park, or hey, what area is this? It's like, don't let your community go to shit all over some, well, Trump's tweets were mean, and I thought Biden was going to fix stuff. And I was like, we've been trying to tell you, we've been trying to tell you that the media lies. I mean, look at the type of shit they're saying. The left media said after the Colorado shooting, they said, this is just another example of white men disproportionately committing mass shootings. Man, y'all, y'all, y'all are obsessed. Y'all are obsessed with race and color. Like I've never heard, like you ever seen all those Morgan Freeman clips where he's like, oh yeah, let's start talking about race. Yeah. I'm going to call you a white man. You don't call me a black man. Like yeah. I'm an actor. You're a fucking interviewer. Let's focus on what we got. to. But what about race? What do you, how did you feel with the race? And it's, there's this one little, uh, this this college girl on a TikTok. I think her name is Noelle. Hey. I um I do duets of her videos all the time. Here she is. Have you ever noticed that your left 
leftist friends are always saying that they're fighting the system and fighting against oppression. But in reality, is it them who gets canceled for putting BLM in their bio? Is it them who gets canceled for putting their pronouns in their bio? Is it them who has to fear not getting accepted into a school or losing their job because of their political views? No, they're not. They are the ones who are celebrated. Compare the right and conservatives to Nazis and white supremacists and fascists. When throughout history, fascists, white supremacists, Nazis, all these types of people sought to silence people. So who's controlling the media? Twitter. Who's kicking people off media? I already have a video on this. Twitter. Who's doxing people and canceling people for simply thinking differently? That's the left. And if you consider yourself a leftist, you should really read a history book because you're behaving a lot like the people that you claim to hate. Mm, gangster. Her name is Noelle Fitch. And uh, she looks like Native American, Latina, or Mexican or something. Mm. But um, I don't even know how the fuck I brought her up. But in the middle of my rant, in the middle of my little rant, is basically like, you know, we're just trying to like show y'all a different perspective. And, you know, a lot of folks that were parading to get Biden elected, I mean, I don't. I don't know how if y'all have buy, like vote, buyer's remorse, but I mean as we stated earlier, Latino Hollywood really pushed Biden down the raza's throat. Meanwhile, people like us who are kind of like, hey, um, I think Trump's uh, a better option. I think he's doing a better job. And it's like, no, he killed all them people because of COVID because he knew what he was doing. It's like, man, you letting the media just. And I get it, y'all. It's hard. It's it hard to tell things apart it is it is and you know if we could if we could have had those consecutive you know terms it would have really been an interesting uh, comparison to go two terms of obama and then two terms with trump and then really have like really run the gamut on was it a, not a i mean what do you want to call the first four years like it was a really interesting like we had good borders good economies good this good that whatever and then would the next four have been just like a coast would it have been more of the same and, and continue the, the trend upwards or what well, i guess we'll never know but he might be the only the second president you know who wins a non-consecutive term in 2024 and then it, it's kind of like we needed or america needed or americans needed this break because he was such a disruptor that people were constantly being inundated with this guy's, you know, off the wall approach to the presidency, right? Mm -hmm. And now it's like it's almost as if whoever's pulling the strings on this the matrix that we're in, right, in the simulation, has put it to where, all right, this guy can't run again, or it's literally going to shatter the matrix so hard that we're going to have to reset the entire game. I think maybe halfway through Biden's uh, term, people are going to be ready for some Trump. They're probably going to be like, okay, enough of this shit. Like what? I keep seeing it on on Instagram and TikTok where people are showing the gas price. Like, uh, what the fuck is this? Yeah. Why is it, especially California, because of the state taxes, it's even higher over there. Oh, yeah. Shout out Hop Society. Gentleman loves listening to the podcast, and, and we interact pretty much uh, pretty often on Instagram. He sent me a video and a screenshot of, like, their pumps. Actually, here's it right here. Did I do? Yeah, I did. This is what... I never noticed it. I don't know. I mean, ours don't have anything like that, does it? Oh, contains up to 10% ethanol? Oh, the federal no. tax, state <laughs> yeah. tax. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if they list that. Maybe they do. So what is it? What was the amount? So it says for federal, gasoline is 18.4. And for state, it's 41.7. It says plus all other applic applicable state and local sale taxes and fees. And that's per gallon. That's cents per gallon of additional taxes mm. on top of each gallon. So federal and state. And Just, in diesel, they tax it uh, more on the federal and a little bit less on the state. Crazy. Yeah, man. So... You talk, like, you're talking $5 in, like, West Hollywood and shit. We going back to the Obama era, man. Um, you know, more jobs getting sent overseas. Uh, Ford just picked up, uh, took off uh, a comp uh, comp comp manufacturing facility Yeah, we Ohio. haven't talked about that. Yeah, yeah, we haven't talked about that yet. But they made the news for, um, you know, kind of reneging on a 2019 agreement where they would stay in Ohio, and but are now talking about going back to Mexico. So this was during Trump era where he... Where, I guess maybe they were incentivized somehow. Yeah, their exact statement was the political climate isn't what it was in 2019 when we agreed to do this. So they'll they'll be taking next gen models, not all of them. Like they'll still make like super duty trucks and some other things in Ohio, but it's just not going to be what they said. They and we're do. barely in March. We're yeah. barely in March. <laughs> Three months in, and to kind of put you know the cherry on top of it, I was trying to find because we didn't get to it, but some of the military stuff that he was talking about, like um, he did an executive order to make the transition for. Like, if you're in the military and you want to tra transition, it's free. 
like he did an executive order. So now that's going to be free if you're in the military. And then he like did, they did something for like flight suits for uh, pregnant pilots Mm -hmm. or some shit. I heard about that. Which that sounds strange. Maternity but, suits for yeah, uh, that's what it was. Maternity flight yeah, suits. That's what it was. He said it like in the middle of this thing. We're gonna have more maternity flight suits and something, something. <laughs> and it's like whoa, 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 rewind. Yes, yeah, you got pregnant chicks out there flying that. a thing. How many G's until the baby just turns into mush? Oh man, the G forces. You know what I'm talking about? That boy said mush. It'll be it'll be, it'll be like yeah, it's total like like uh, the kids play with kinetic sand. It'll just be fucking kinetic sand. Like oh my goodness, right. but. Uh, yeah, a little dark, huh? A little dark there? You're very dark there, man. Last thing. What the fuck was I going to say? The maternity thing, the transgender thing, and there was something else. Matil- so uh, taxpayers have to pay for the hormone treatments in case you're in the military and you're trans. Isn't that, isn't that so strange? We can't take care of our veterans, though. People are always up in arms about how the VA doesn't take care of veterans. Well, we're about to go help all these other countries um, restabilize themselves so that they stop the surge at the border. <clears throat> so it's more money, more money, more money. Money, 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 money. Taxes. Yeah, right. And then uh, Biden, this was a very strange thing, where the Biden administration announced that they were going to fire anybody who went public about smoking weed. Anybody, anytime they ever talked in public admitting they smoked weed, which Kamala joked about it on The Breakfast Club. Yeah, along with other, whatever lies she said about Tupac that day. So what kind of weird decision? How do you... like? If you have all this stuff you need to quote unquote fix, if you have all these issues, why, how does that decision even come about? Like, okay, here's what we got to do, y'all. All right, what are we doing? What are we focusing on? Okay, anybody in my staff ever admitted smoking weed? It's like, what? Dude, I heard Scott Adams say, this decision doesn't sound like a human decision. He says, it should be a red flag that they're using some kind of AI to come up with a little game plan, like mm-hmm. a little simulation as to, and then you won't do this, like the fucking robot, like, <laughs> next step, you need to fire everybody who admitted to smoking weed. It's like, when he said that, I was like, man, you right. Like, who comes up with that law and that rule? And it's so fucking weird. Yeah, it's weird that, like, you're going to go through the process of, so I, I I didn't know that. I kind of read briefly that they would be fired if they had. Weird. I thought I thought if it was if they had smoked weed. Like if, if you show up to the work job, you know what I mean, high. If you show up high, that's a different story. Like it makes you think who 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 presented that as a law, right? It was it a law or is it like just a rule or? Uh, yeah, it's a good question. I think it's like a rule. Because well, if it were, I mean, yeah. Because if it were a law, it, it's so dumb. You would have to have somebody first like endorse the law, put it up for vote, and then weed is legal in D.C exactly exactly among so many other places so if anybody has some context like maybe we don't know something like no chingo that was fake news or somebody explain this how and why how and why is that a thing you're right there you got a little frog in your throat (coughs) how and why (laughs) the king of spices is back how and why is that a thing like what if scott adams is right and this shit was, like, we find out later, like, oh, they were using this AI thing and it was telling them what to do. Uh, I, th- I feel like, I feel like I-, I will jump on that train right away because that's how I've been thinking for the past decade and a half, I feel like. Mm. Um, and then you, we will come to find that out. Let's just put our full hats on now. We'll come to find that out and then realize that they, sh- they should have realized that the simulation or the AI was really fucking up when all the cities were burning for like an entire year straight. But hey guys, let's like reset the, the AI because it's kind of like throwing out some bad suggestions. Like, no, no, let's keep running with it. Let's see what happens. And then- like, like meaning it's instructing them, like here's the play. Just let it burn. Yeah. <laughs> let it go along with it. Don't call it out. Say, say there's no such thing as Antifa. Say that even though we're in a pandemic and, you know, people are trying to express themselves and they're fighting for justice, therefore. Yeah. So instead of resetting the AI, the AI is going to make us reset ourselves. And then you get that great reset that we had never actually delved into. What is the great reset? We'll have to save that for Patreon. It was oh, like that, 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 uh, 20 what sorry guys i know people have talked sent it to me before but it's like you know the article was called the great reset it was from the um whatever the something forum the the big fucking the world something national forum mm-hmm. i don't know people would be like we talked about it on instagram but that's what i that's what i think man i feel like they're just letting this all kind of like happen just to see how far they can go with some of the uh the agenda that they have on their side it's just weird 
And again, you're welcome to the common sense show. I feel like a lot of this is common sense, and I know a lot of people disagree, and it kind of blows my mind. So you're saying that it's common sense that we're letting them push us to a point where it's like they're not justifying the lockdown, the endless lockdowns. They're not giving you... See, the problem with... um, the problem with follow the science, follow the science, follow mm-hmm. the science, follow the science, follow the science, trust the science, believe the science. The problem with that is you have one scientist saying, well, we found that this drug was a good treatment for this pandemic. Or we found from the data how we looked at it, these lockdowns aren't working. But then you have another scientist. It's like, no, no, no. This is how we interpret the data. And they're both scientists and they don't agree. Yeah, except one gets kicked off social media and the other one's allowed to stay on. And and not only that, but it's like, for one, you weren't there when they conducted their experiment. Two, you can have several scientists not agree, but they're telling us, uh, we're the party that believes in science. This administration will trust science. We're going to follow the science. Meanwhile, Trump's been right about so much shit for whatever reason. I don't know how he comes up with his stuff but he'll be like no hydroxychloroquine <laughs> is a good thing or it's just gonna go away you just watch or they keep testing you get in more numbers and it's like yeah they found that these tests are faulty the sense they're sensitive the pcr number when they yeah. set it to 40 it does this and then they adjust it and you get less false positives and all the while they've been using this this slogan of trust the science it's like a way to it's like a club it's to shut you up call you crazy call you baseless conspiracy theorists um uh whatever it's just like don't question anything don't question the e-l-e-c-t yeah yeah right you want to do that don't question nothing follow the science what's the science whatever we say yeah there was enough <laughs> <Whatever. laughs> god damn he sound like a pimp <laughs> bitch follow the science they go out there like and do a it. real dictator. bitch get, a, get back on the track bitch follow the science she's like okay it's not making sense for me but bitch follow the science who was it it might have been so a really good follow is um Tim Pool's one of his co-hosts, uh, Luke. Luke, we are Change. So Luke. Oh yeah, I didn't know he was one of Tim Pool's people. Yeah, so Luke, we are Change. He's on the show daily with him uh, and uh, Sour Patch and the other gentleman who I'm forgetting his name. But he his his account's really good to follow. And it might have been him who posted something to the effect of how quickly, uh, like a, a study had shown, like how quickly I can't find it. You could scare people into basically almost like submission. Like I think it was like seven consecutive weeks of basically this fear porn that the media does will like deteriorate your brain enough to just give in to just be like just be scared and then just go along with whatever they say after that point like Like, fuck it just give me the shot just i want my freedom give me whatever you know and then when you hear things like fauci saying like we may never shake hands again you'll just go along with it versus the common sense people be like how about you shut your dumb fucking mouth that's stupid when did he say that a long time ago Around the time where he was like, "Mask, you don't need masks," and then he's like, "No, wear three masks." Uh, there's a clip that went again. viral where uh, Rand Paul was basically saying, he "Oh, the theatrics." It, he was just okay. saying, "So you're, but based on this, this is Doctor Rand Paul, right?" Yeah. He was basically saying, "Look, man, we've seen time and time again." I'm paraphrasing. Do you remember the details? Where he was like, "Yeah, you, you're saying that ma- uh, having gone back on his contradiction that masks basically." You know, if you're already, if you have the shot and you say you can't get it and you say this, that, and the other, then you're saying you still have to wear the mask and you still have the social distance and whatever. It's just political Theatric, theater. Yeah. yeah, it's theatrics. He goes, no, you, you, you're understanding it yeah. wrong. It's not theatrics. Yeah. And he's like, well, we have variants now and the variants make it to where the, the, the shot may not work with the variants. And and like, We've like, had no cases of variants here and then, spiking. And, and then I think DeSantis even went viral he was like posting up the thing he's like okay if you're 70 the chances of, okay if you're 60 the chances of you if you're 20 the chances of he's just breaking it down by age Dude. if you're school age the chances of you it's so. it that's the kind of shit that if you get scared enough too you will just hook line and sinker fauci's my guy though Fau- dr fauci hasn't seen a, a patient in over 30 years well i mean the only the rebuttal to that is well he's not He's not a um, a practicing physician, general practitioner. He's an epidemiologist, virologist, and he really understands uh, viruses. And he's been in doing good work in viruses for many decades. However, sure, he's also the one who, when uh, AIDS patients, you you know the movie with uh, Matthew McConaughey. What's it called? Dallas Buyers Club. I never saw it. Man, okay, I heard it was great. So let me give you the the quick rundown on that. So in the movie. 
uh, when M- Matthew McConaughey finds out he has uh, AIDS or HIV, I believe, they start putting him on this medicine. I think it was called um, AZT or something like that. And in the movie, they're showing how it's making him sicker. Mm. It, it was like a, a drug designed for something else. Long story short, he ends up having to go to Mexico and get a different kind of treatment where that doctor saying, fuck the AZT. Don't let them give you that. That You need to get on these and you're going to be good. Boom. He started getting better. And he started slanging it to all these people mm. because they were in the same boat where Dr. Fauci in the 80s was the one... Right. pharmaceutically pushing the AZT mm-hmm. uh, and fact check me because I may be saying the name of the drug wrong and I made a I may have fucked up parts and details of the movie however Fauci has been in the virus game for a long time um, that book I read that yellow one right there um, deadliest enemy mm-hmm. it's about viruses and all that they mention him in the book and it just so happens that he sometimes works with big pharma sometimes he's like works for the government in different departments sometimes he's the one that approves sending a check to the wuhan lab where, mm. where it leaked from because they were studying hey what if a bad country uh alters one of these bugs and creates like a super bug or it, it reacts a certain way and uh so yeah he's been involved but in very controversial ways wouldn't it, isn't it crazy when we we're hearing people say that El Virus could have mm-hmm. been man-made and could have been, you know, created or, or leaked or anything. Uh, it was like those people immediately were banned from platforms. They, you, they, they got strikes on channels. Miscommunication, uh, disinformation. Yeah. And then two months later, they're like, we've confirmed that it's basically El Virus is altered, made, slash was leaked from a lab. Yeah, from the beginning, man, the details were always sketchy. It was like, don't worry, y'all. The World Health Organization says, you know, it's, it's still over there in Wuhan and it hasn't gotten out. And then they're like, it, it doesn't jump to humans. So I think it's just in, in, in the pangolins right now. Yeah. Or it's a bat. It's a bat in a pangolin. And then as they're buying up all the PPP from around the world, they're yeah. just like <sighs> vacuuming up all the PPP, getting ready to sell it back to us seven times the price. <laughs> um, meanwhile, they're not giving us no info. Meanwhile, they closed Wuhan to the rest of mainland China. They made it to where, if you're from Wuhan, stay your ass in Wuhan. (laughs) However, you were able to book a flight to Italy, to Europe, to, I mean, Italy is Europe, but like the States, you know, people flying out of Wuhan. Meanwhile, meanwhile, they're not able to go move around throughout China. So it's like, oh, that's suspicious. You bought up all the PPE. You closed off Wuhan from the rest of China and you're letting their international airport stay open. And then Trump was like, we need to close the flights. And boom, they called him xenophobic. They were like, bitch, you stupid Trump for trying to fucking uh, stop flights from, from fucking Wuhan. What's wrong with you, you monster? And then it's like, he might have saved a million people. Not only did he help bring the vaccine about, he might have saved a shit ton of people. And they're saying that one of these vaccines might become a good base platform for a cancer vaccine. A custom cancer vaccine. I think it's the mRNA one where they're, they're going to be able to really make some advancements in the in the cancer uh, world. And this is all, you know what I mean, Trump, thankfully he did close those flights, even though y'all were talking shit. <laughs> Operation Warp Speed. Let's go out on a high note. Let's make fun of somebody. <laughs> all right, Latino Hollywood. <laughs> I was going to talk about the last article that I, I kind of quoted. It'll ruffle some feathers. It's just funny. Which one is it? Uh, Army Combat? Yeah, man. I just thought that was a hilarious stat. Oh, did I put it on there? Yeah, yeah, the Army Combat Fitness uh-huh. Test. A standard used to assess all soldiers has 65% failure rate among women and 10% among men. Oh, that's the headline? Yeah, that was from the but Daily Telegraph. I heard that they're, I heard that they're um, what you call, uh, wanting to change or make it not as hard. They the, did. They It changed it. Check it out. This is it right here. And they're talking about this is the United States. Yeah. Okay. Overwhelming failure rate among women causes army to halt the gender neutral fitness standards. So from my understanding they'd already changed it, but they still are failing at a huge rate. Mm. Man, uh John Burke, uh he's a He goes ham. He has some videos on YouTube. When I first discovered him on you on YouTube, um he had some where he would just go in about military issues. Like I'm not up on game with everything in the military, but he made some videos where he's like, they're letting them be fat and out of shape, 
in the military mm. they're they're soft on them they're not allowed to the drill sergeants can't really yell at them no more they you know basically they have all these little rights and shit in boot camp and they're just going easy on them the test they altered the test um and now you're seeing more and more reports of these uh book lists that i think it's the navy different different branches of the government i mean of the military they're having them read it's like all this like white fragility type shit like um I forget the names of all the authors. Y'all can Google or duck, duck, go it. You know what I'm talking about? It's like all these books that are just very like woke. Like the Target, the race section of yeah. books at Target. Kind of like that. Like that Robin, whatever lady that we talked about not so long ago. Yeah, they got him reading all that shit. How does that bode well for our, you know, defenses, if that makes sense? Well, I'm sure China's having a fucking field day about it. They're oh, they like, can't wait. They're like, yes, we're getting closer. Yeah, meanwhile, they, they training, they whipping their people into shape. And uh, they're just letting us just be woke and soft. You know what I mean? How soon does it... Let's go out on this speculation. How soon does the pendulum start going back the other way? Is it going to be like, you know, we were saying halfway through this, it, through this administration, people are going to be dying for some Trump action. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be at the end of four years? Like bring the jobs back, lower the gas, stop the wars. Yeah, stop your bullshit race baiting. Stop all of this propaganda. Like how many more people are finally going to have to open their eyes to realize that <laughs> unlike your your commenter the other day propaganda is real it's not fake you know mm -hmm. these things people are lying on a daily basis on on tv yeah persuasion persuasion and uh even to an extent hypnosis like a lot of these people are definitely hypnotized by and, what they've heard and seen and like i mentioned earlier studies show that you can get brain damage from consuming partisan media partisan news like just just one side yeah fuck your brain up Luckily, even though I probably cons I, I consume some of both, right? But I probably consume more of of uh, conservative stuff just because the people in general seem to be more entertaining to me. Uh, they they don't cry and whine as much as everybody on the left. But I'll still get just equally annoyed at you know Candace Owens or Ben Shapiro, especially with all like the puritanical type shit. Like we didn't talk about Cardi and Candace Owens that whole beef, that Twitter beef. Mm -hmm. But shit like that just so dumb to me, you know. All of the you know I, I get WAP is like. It is what it is, and she's, you know, Miss Conservative. But it's just like, what a dumb argument to have on Twitter. Yeah, during the freeze, I needed some WAP, that water and power. <laughs> that water and power. <laughs> oh, that's a high note to go out on. Thank you guys so much. Uh, Freedom of Speech Tour is coming to a city near you. We named it that because it's important. And shout out to all the patrons who protect our freedom of speech. We're able to get yeah. on this. Yeah, yeah. We're able to get on here and have an honest adult discussion this isn't for the kids table if you just don't want to have facts and you just want to be a little cry baby and, and keep a closed mind go sit at the kids table and go be a little troll but shout out to all the adults that uh support us on patreon if you want to join hit up patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales keep the discussion robust hold people accountable we're just trying to seek the truth we know the truth is somewhere in the middle and uh, we head out to Mission, Texas tomorrow. The show is sold out, and we anticipate coming back with some great interviews and coverage and video. So stay tuned for that. Sass.